I thought Google Ads was a scam. Spent thousands every month, clicks flying in, but sales, nothing. I'd open my campaign, where's the money going? Who's getting rich here? It's not me, is it Google? But then I figured it out. Google Ads wasn't the scam. The real scam was that nobody showed me the full system, the full tool set. You only really understand a small slice, maybe the ad campaign, but there's a whole machine underneath that decides whether your ads make money or quietly drain away. So in this video, I'm gonna show you the entire system, every part that makes Google Ads actually work. Too often, I see advertisers like you miss out a part, a small part, maybe an email alert that you didn't put in place, and then bang, your merchant center's down just as Black Friday kicks in. I know, it's painful. Your website, your tracking, your cookie consent, Google Tag Manager, conversions, merchant center, and all these external tools are all part of this big ecosystem. Because when you understand this system, you finally know how to scale profitably instead of guessing. You may be new to my channel. I'm John Langley, the founder of Click Convert Marketing. My aim is to help entrepreneurs, business owners, and marketing professionals travel from the vision to a stable financial success with Google Ads. This video is part of that process I'm walking you through. I've got a team of 25 Google Ads specialists who've generated over 1.5 billion in revenue for small businesses. In the last 15 years, we've helped thousands of Google advertisers just like you. I've got offices in Santa Rosa, wine country up in California, and Wrexham in the UK. As all YouTubers ask, please hit the like, especially the subscribe, and drop a comment with your issues in below. Right, let's get back to ads. Let's start at the center. Years ago, when I started back in 2006, 19 odd years ago, God, that's way too long. You needed just two parts, a website and Google Ads. Well, it was Google AdWords back then. Nothing else, but now it's a highly complex spider's web of interrelated systems. And the worst part is they depend on each other. And when one fails, they, or it's not set up correctly, you suddenly start to struggle with Google Ads. The truth is, this whole Google Ads system is often too complex, and the real issue is you don't know what questions to ask. So let's start with the website. It's not just a brochure. Many of you think that your website is just there to show some information, a few nice pictures, a contact form, maybe an e-commerce store. It's like a digital business card or digital brochure. But in the Google Ads ecosystem, your website is doing far, far more than that. It's not just a brochure, it's the entire hub of your marketing machine. And here's what's really going on behind the scenes. It shows information, it sells to people. That's the obvious bit. But it also feeds data to external systems. It sends data out to Google Analytics, the Tag Manager, Facebook, Hotjar, and external CRM systems, maybe HubSpot. It's really a data engine, a communication hub, and the foundation for every smart decision you need to make in Google Ads. So every button click, every scroll, every form submit, they are all signals. These signals flow into Google's AI through your tracking setup, through Google Analytics, known as GA4. Let's get on to our first big one besides the website. Cookie consent, it's literally a pain in the ass. And it's really the first headache you're gonna come across in this whole system. In Europe, and now increasingly across America, you cannot legally track, track anybody or send any information to Google without that user's consent. I know it sounds simple, but it isn't. It isn't just as simple as installing a banner and you're done. God, I wish it was, it isn't. If you haven't set it up so the user can go, hey, accept, your tracking tags don't get to fire. Now, if you don't know, tags are basically small bits of code that record the user's actions, such as page views, conversions, yet setting them up is not easy. Your ads will still run, but and you'll still burn money, but your reporting will be dead, and it means you can't optimize your ads. And the worst part, 
Getting Cookie Consent to actually work with Google Analytics and Tag Manager is an absolute nightmare. I've spent more hours than I care to admit debugging content systems, WooCommerce, Magento, your order values are inconsistent, conversion tracking isn't accurate because the cookie banner wasn't firing correctly or rather isn't set up correctly. And oh God, it's even worse when it's intermittent. That becomes a real nightmare to fix. So I, yes, I know it's a pain in the ass, but it's essential you get this set up correctly. You've got to have consent tracking installed. You've got to test it and you've got to verify that it really is working. Otherwise, you're flying blind, spending money and sending zero data back to Google. And just because you purchase a, cons a consent plugin, don't believe it will work. I personally, I recommend one called Cookie Script. There's a link below, okay? And I think that's the easiest and simplest one to set up. And I've even got a video to go along with it. So, we can advertise. Google Ads, here we come. As you'll all know, you've got Google Search. This is where everybody goes. Someone types in a keyword. Your text ad shows up at the top. And it's high intent, and but it's also a bit highly competitive. And then we've got search partners. These are like other, these are websites that uses Google search technology, smaller search engines and directories where ads can also appear. But a word of caution here, they can absolutely waste a fortune, particularly if you're doing lead generation. And we've got YouTube, it's where we are now. And of course, uh, Google owns YouTube, so video ads can play before, during, or alongside videos. And then we've got the display network. That's where Google's network of millions of websites and apps that show banner ads. And they're great for remarketing awareness and not so great for conversions though. If used properly, it does work quite well. And then we've got shopping ads. These are the product boxes with the images and the prices that appear right on the search results page. And, but to run these, we need one more piece, the Google Merchant Center. Now, all this sounds great, but there's a huge problem here. We could track your results using Google Ads itself, but we need to rely on a more comprehensive tracking system, one that tracks all the traffic, not just Google Ads traffic. And here's where we need to talk about Google Analytics version 4, or better known as GA4. GA4 just doesn't, isn't a reporting system anymore. It's become a secondary data hub that connects your website and Google Ads together. In truth, GA4's real use is to record the conversions, to give you visibility of what transaction values are, and which channels, are, and that's about what 95% of people use it for. Every time someone clicks an ad and lands on your website, GA4 tracks what they do, what pages they visit, how long they stay there, and whether they buy, call, or fill out a form. That data gets pushed to Google Ads, where, it, where Google Ads use it, of course, to learn what a good customer likes, what, this is how Google makes these really smart decisions about what products and ads to show next. If your cookie consent isn't working properly, and honestly, a lot of them aren't, GA4 can't collect that data. So no consent equals no tracking. But your ads still run, your budget still spends, but your analytics is blind, and this leads to the bigger problem. Even when everything is working, GA4 now is only about 60% accurate. That means about four out of every 10 conversions you get just vanish from the reports. They happen, but GA4 doesn't see them. I've seen situations where Google Ads appear to be getting huge numbers of conversions, but when I got one where we took over an account and we discovered that the conversions didn't really exist. We found out there were two Google Analytics accounts connected to the Google Ads. That was doubling up the numbers, but oh no, that wasn't enough. Every lead form triggered the conversion tracking code four times. So we got four conversions going into two GA accounts, giving eight conversions when there was really over only one. And then to add into this situation, we were getting spam leads that were being generated by bots. So you've got, conversion, you've got a conversion tracking nightmare with Google Ads going like hell, believing it had reached conversion nirvana. Conversions are really now a feedback loop. Google Ads, as you all know, is an AI learning system. It needs data, it needs a feedback loop on your conversions. It needs to know how and where to spend your money. A conversion, in truth, 
is whatever success means to you. It could be a phone call, it could be a form fill, it could be an e-commerce purchase, it could even be how long someone spends on, time, on site. But when this happens, the conversion tag fires sending data straight back to GA4 that it then sends on to Google Ads. Conversion tracking isn't optional. Of all the things in this video, it's your oxygen. You need clean feedback so you can get smart bidding, smart AI optimizations. And when your data is wrong, your bidding, your budgeting, your whole strategy, it's just off. And it's a classic thing in IT. It's garbage in, garbage out. And really, that's why we've been forced here to build our own conversion hound, a tracking system that doesn't replace GA4. It works alongside sending in better conversion data. So GA4 is essential, but on its own, I don't believe it's enough anymore. You need to supplement GA4 with better tracking, such as Conversion Hound, to give you that final layer and edge over competitors. The next big element in this type of ecosystem, the Google Tag Man Manager, or as it's known, GTM, is really a product that's changed the digital marketing landscape forever. Before the Google Tag Manager, every time you wanted to add tracking, Google tag tracking, Facebook pixel, form tracking, anything, you had to beg a developer. And developers, they either hold you to ransom with huge fees or they never get round to it. You get situations where weeks would pass, budgets burning away, no data showing up, and your developer still hasn't installed the code yet. In the end, Google came up with a solution and it was to install one piece of code. It was to facilitate marketing professionals to be able to add code. And it really does work too. However, this is Google. And now the tag manager has become extremely complex and you can easily lose hours following chat GBT instructions on how to get conversion tracking working. Unfortunately, tag manager has now become it needs developer level abilities. It's a bit ironic, really. It type of defeats its purpose, but you still need it. So here, here's in our growing ecosystem foundation. We've got a working website. We've got cookie consent. We've got Google Ads. We've got GA4, Google Analytics watching, and now we've got the Google Tag Manager. So we can finally run ads and see what's happening. That's not really true if you're an e-commerce store. So let's talk about products in the merchant center. For e-commerce, and this is a big one, shopping ads. You've seen them on Google search, the product little image at the top, the title and the price. But you can't run shopping or performance max campaigns without the Google merchant. Well, you can run performance max, you just can't list, run the, the uh, listing groups. So the merchant center is Google's product database for your store. Your website really can't handle the number of the volume of requests that Google would make to it if it was providing live data it would just crash your website. So instead, you upload a product feed, it's a structured list of your products, the product ID, the titles, the prices, the images, the brands, is it in stock or not? And in its most basic form, it's really a spreadsheet and it's usually sent as a CSV or a text file. Often, it's sent using a special text file called XML or it uses a computer-computer uh, communication technology called APIs. You've probably heard all these. It's a special way computers talk to each other. But in the merchant center, you have to do a little bit more. You've got to set up your store details. You've got to prove you own the website and claim it. You've got to make sure that data feed that you just set up is regularly refreshed. And critically, you've got to set up your shipping costs and your tax rates. And often the data you provide isn't ideal, so you've got to create additional rules to modify that data. That could be adding brand names to product titles, or it could be quite complex modifications to the data. But don't forget, your titles are the real source of keywords to power the search, and these titles have to be optimized. But if your feed breaks or it gets disapproved, then your products can disappear nearly instantly. And this is why feed management matters. And while we're here, two of the biggest issues I see are people not checking emails from the Google Merchant Center regarding disqualification warnings. Now you've got to actually go and do something in. You can find out that you 
put now, I've fixed the problem, I've gone in there, can you please review my feed and turn it on? And if you haven't fixed it correctly and it isn't correct, you're gonna have to wait seven days between each review. So make sure that your team stay on top of monitoring those emails that are in the Merchant Center. The second one that really annoys me is people don't put automated emails in for impression checks to do with shopping and performance max campaigns because this is the earliest way you can get visibility into whether your feed has failed. Too often I see advertisers basically not monitoring this and often what happens is you see advertisers with multiple merchant centers and they've got an old merchant center over here and they've got a live merchant center here. And if you're not careful, somebody in your team accidentally reactivates the old merchant center or somebody is new at your old agency goes and does it. And then what happens is bang, you're dead and you've lost the merchant center. You've got to re reclaim it back and go for that whole process. Now, there is a bit of a bonus with these feeds, okay? You can reuse this feed. You can use it for your Bing ads. You can use it for your Facebook shops, your Instagram marketplaces. You've got the, you can use the same feed to power multiple channels. But if that feed breaks, the whole machine stops. So you've got to think of these feeds like your fuel lines. You've got to make sure they're optimized. Keep them clean, because if you don't, your marketing is just gonna stall and stop dead. Now, serious advertisers just don't use Google's own tools. There's tools like Product Hero. They take your feed to the next level. They fix issues with titles, missing info, and they can even act as a CSS partner in Europe. Uh, CSSs give you a, like a 20% advantage in the shopping ads. Same budget, you just get more wins. So these extra tools plug into the system and they act as performance boosters. You've got to be quite careful with them though because some of them are really good and other of them are just nothing more than, a, I've used the word scam a bit here, they don't really add anything to it. So you've got to be really careful on which tools you choose. So we understand the, the full map a little bit more now. At the center, we've got Google Ads sending traffic down its spokes to search YouTube display and shopping. And around it, you've got these rings. You've got the website, you've got your consent, you've got your Google Tag Manager, you've got your GA4, Google Analytics, you've got your conversions, you've got your merchant center, and you've got ex external tools. Every part talks to the others. If it feels a bit overwhelming, that's okay. It is complex. You've basically got five different systems that talk to each other. The ads, the analytics, the merchant center, the tag manager can send, plus your website. And that's why successful advertisers run this as a team sport. So I hope this has given you guys a bit more insight into the Google Ads system. Now, if you're spending money on Google Ads and not getting results and you want us to have a look, at, look under the hood for you, there's a link below and we can set up a free review for you. Um, we'll show you exactly where your system's leaking and what fixes you need to do in what order so that your spend really does start fighting and starts winning for you and gives you that ROI. So Google Ads, it isn't a scam, but running it without understanding the whole system you're scamming yourself. You're just flushing money down that toilet to Google. So understand the system and scale with confidence. Until next time, guys, bye.